integration is a very useful tool in economical analysis. Before learning how we can apply it, let's start by taking a look at something we already know. Let's look at our general understanding of basic trends in consumer and producer trade as represented by the following graph. We've looked at supply and demand before in Calculus 1, and now we're going to see what we can do with it to see how this integration can be applied. Let's review. Remember, supply is an increasing function, demand is a decreasing function. Where they intersect is called the equilibrium point. This is where we expect the market to settle. P star will represent the equilibrium price, and Q star will represent the equilibrium quantity. So let's start by talking about what we call consumer surplus. Now notice that the quantity at equilibrium is where they intersect. Some consumers would have been willing to pay more for that product, but not all. So the consumer surplus measures how much the consumer gained by going to this equilibrium price and quantity. It's how much they saved overall from the settling of the market. At the price P star, consumer surplus is defined by the area between the demand curve, which is our curve that comes right down, and our horizontal line at the equilibrium price. The area between these two curves, represented by the checkered area, is called the consumer surplus. The producer surplus, again, represents how much the producer has gained from going to equilibrium. Because for some people, they would have been willing to pay a little bit more, and the supplier could have set the price a little bit lower, and so they've gained some money from going to this equilibrium. At the price P star, producer surplus is defined by the area between the supply curve, which is our increasing curve, and our equilibrium price, indicated again by the checkered area. So what if we looked at a price that was not at equilibrium? Notice what happens here. The consumer surplus gets smaller because now there's less people willing to buy. So the effect of changing that price will lower the amount of consumer surplus. Same thing we can see here with the supplier surplus or producer surplus by the white checkered area. By raising the price, they get a little bit more area under the curve. And so they might make a little bit more money than they did, say, at equilibrium. So at P plus Q plus, which is our new point where we intersect, we notice that the areas have changed. How do we find these surpluses? So in order to find the consumer and producer surplus going from zero to Q star, the equilibrium quantity, we want to subtract the area under the bottom graph from the area under the top graph. This goes back to finding the area between two curves. We always do top minus bottom when we integrate. Here's where we can apply our knowledge of integration. Let's see how we do that. Let's label all our graphs so we're on the same page. Let's call the demand function f of q. Let's call the supply function g of q. And let's call the equilibrium price h of q. Notice h of q is just going to be a number represented by this horizontal line. So the consumer surplus is going to be the area under the demand curve, which is right here, the decreasing curve, minus the area under our equilibrium price. When we subtract the area of those two curves, we get the consumer surplus. Similarly, the producer surplus we're going to get by doing the area under the horizontal line minus the area under the supply curve. So again, we integrate from zero to the equilibrium quantity, h of q minus g of q. Now let's do this with some numbers so we can see how we apply these to our integral. Suppose the demand function is given by P equals 35 minus Q, and the supply curve is given by P equals 3 plus Q. We want to find the consumer and producer surplus when the market is in equilibrium. So the first thing we're going to need to do to set up our integrals is find the equilibrium point. If we set our two curves equal to one another, we can solve for the equilibrium quantity. So we have 35Q equals 3 plus Q, 
subtract 3 from both sides, and add a q to both sides. Then we'll have 32 equals 2q. Divide both sides by 2, and we get q equals 16. So the equilibrium quantity is 16. To get the corresponding equilibrium price, we plug that 16 back into either equation. If we plug it into the first equation, we get 35 minus 16, which is going to give us an equilibrium price of $19. The price is very important because that's one of our equations. Remember, h of q. We use that 19 as our function in both the consumer and producer surplus. So now, let's look at each of these separately and see how we set up our integrals. So let's start with the consumer surplus. Again, our general integral is that we're going to integrate from 0 to q star, the equilibrium quantity, which was 16, and we're going to do the demand curve minus the price. So we integrate from 0 to 16. Our demand curve is 35 minus q, and we subtract off that equilibrium price of 19. This part you'll do in your calculator. When you put it all in, you will get a consumer surplus of 128. If we now want to look at the producer surplus, we now again want to integrate from 0 to the equilibrium quantity of 16, but now we're going to do the price first, the price curve, minus the supply curve, that 3 plus q. So when we set that up, we have the integral from 0 to 16 of 19, which again is our equilibrium price, minus our curve for supply, 3 plus q. Now I want to point out here, and this is important, when you subtract off something that has more than one term, you want to use parentheses. When you put that in your calculator, again that'll equal 128. Let's look at another example. Let's suppose now that we want to find a consumer surplus for the demand curve, 250 minus 5q squared. And we want to do this when 7 units are sold. So we're not looking at an equilibrium point, we're looking at a specific quantity. So at that quantity, we can take that 7 units and find the corresponding price. So if we take q equals 7 and plug it into our demand curve, the corresponding price will be $54. So that's the curve that we want to use, that 54, as our horizontal line. So we're going to do demand curve minus 54, and we're going to integrate starting at 0 and going up to 7. So we take our general equation, and we integrate from 0 to 7. We take our demand curve, 250 minus 4q squared, minus the price, which we calculated to be 54. Again, you'll do this part on your calculator, and when you plug that all in, we get a consumer surplus of 914.67.